All right, hi everyone, my name is Antima, and today I'm going to be talking about ES6, which is the latest standard for JavaScript. So first I want to talk a little bit about the history of JavaScript, then we'll talk about the features in ES6, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to adopt ES6, okay? So JavaScript was actually created in 1995 by Netscape. Um, you, many of you will remember the browser wars back then. Um, so in an effort to standardize between browsers, they su submitted um, JavaScript to ECMA, which is like a European standards committee. And uh, ECMA script, which is what the name ES comes from, was released in 1997. Um, however, the browser wars continued and actually an ES4 was actually abandoned because the major parties could not agree on a standard. Um, but JavaScript really kind of took off uh, around 2005 when Ajax used um, JavaScript as its backbone. And as we all know, you know many other libraries and frameworks were created uh, after that. And finally, in 2009, ES5 was released, and that's the, the version of JavaScript that we've been learning here at Fullstack. And uh, short, not too long ago, um, ES6 was, uh, was released. Okay. So now I'm gonna talk about the features of ES6. I'm gonna start with some of the kind of more one-liner features, and then we'll go into more of the conceptual features. Right? So default values. Um, now you can specify default values right in the function signature. You no longer need to check if it was uh, specified or not inside the function. That's kind of nice. It makes your code a lot neater. Uh, REST parameters are, is basically this dot, dot, dot syntax. It allows you to represent an indefinite number of arguments as an array. So many of you will remember this one-liner that they taught us in foundation that I could never remember. So now all you need to do is dot, dot, dot and that will take care of converting the arguments into their, an array for you. Okay. Now, template literals, they make strings a lot easier to read. So uh, right now, if you want to concatenate strings, you have to use the plus sign. Uh, now, in ES6, all you have to do is uh, use the uh, dollar sign with the curly braces, and it will interpolate it for you very nicely. And it also allows, uh, it also makes multi-line strings a lot easier to read. Now, um, variables, this is something that we've heard about recently. Um, in ES6, the var type of variables was a had a functional scope. In ES6, they created uh, two new types of variables called let and cons, um, and, now th and these have uh, block scope. So here's just a little quick example. So let's say they cr uh, created an x up here. Uh, inside this new block, it's actually okay to reuse the name x because it's, it's an, in a different block. Um, but out here, if you try to use the, the X again, you will th it'll throw an error because it's, it's already declared in the same block. Okay. And uh, lots of uh, different classes got new uh, methods, uh, including strings and prototypes that just makes your lives a little easier. Uh, strings got starts with, ends with, includes. Um, an array a function that I found pretty useful was defined. So it finds the first element where the callback returns true. So previously, you'd have to use a filter function, but now you just use the um, dot .find. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, maps. Maps is a new type of data structure. It essentially stores key-value pairs. Uh, we've been using objects for that in ES5, but they have certain limitations, like the key has to be a string, for example. Uh, maps, the key can be anything. It can be a string, an object, functions. Um, and there are lots of like helper functions or methods that make it really easy to use. So you can just call map.size, it will give you the size of your map. Uh, map.get gets you the values. Uh, there's also lots of ways to iterate through it that makes it a lot easier to use in an object. Okay. And now arrow functions. Arrow functions have two main, um, oh, so arrow functions, they allow for more um, concise syntax. It essentially replaces the word function with the parentheses. Um, so in, uh, if you're using an array map or reduce, for example, in your inner function, it looks you know, like this. Now you can just say v, the arrow, v times two. Just makes it a lot easier to read. And another feature for the arrow function is that it, cap it captures the this value of the enclosing context. So this I took from our game of life uh, exercise. So before setting the interval in the windows, we have to save the this in that. So you no longer have to do that in ES6. Um, it, the this is the correct this that you want. Right. Cool. And um, classes are now a thing, an actual thing in, in ES6. 
So before we had to use a constructor function, so this you might remember from foundations, the mammal and cat example. Uh, so now when you want to create the class, you just call the class uh, keyword. Uh, inside the declaration, you, there's a constructor method and you just declare your functions right inside the class. And when you want a subclass, um, you just use the extends keyword. So you might remember to subclass cat from mammal, we had to call the mammal's constructor, then we had to uh, define these values in, on the cat's prototype. So the extends keyword basically does this for you, and then you just call the um, super, uh, your parent's um, constructor within the child's constructor. All right, so those were just a few of the ES6 features. I mean, there are a ton of them. Um, hopefully that got you interested in um, checking some of them out. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how to adopt ES6. So browser support for ES6 still varies. Um, as of right now, um, this is the latest uh, compatibility chart for the latest versions of each browser. Um, so you never know, I mean, as you can see, the, the desk, most of the desktop browsers are doing very well um, with the, the mobile still kind of lagging. But you never know what version browser your users are using. So right now, you can't, unfortunately, write all your code in ES6 yet. Um, what you can do, though, is uh, convert your ES code 6 code back to ES5. And that is a process known as transpilation. And right now, there's, there's a couple tools that, that can do that. The, one of the more popular ones is called Babel. Um, there's many different ways to use this. One is the command line. So you, you do an npm install, you pass it an ES6 script, and it will output you the same uh, code in ES5. And it integrates very well with a lot of build tools, like Gulp, for example. So all you have to do is add these few lines in your Gulp file, in your Gulp build file, and it will kind of compile your code from ES6 to ES5 for you. And it, it, what's kind of nice is though they also have provide like a REPL environment, so you can type your ES6 code on one side, and on the other side you'll see the ES5 equivalent, which is pretty, which is pretty neat. So if you see some features that interest you or you think might be useful, I mean, there's no reason why you can't start using ES6 at the moment. Um, you know, when the browsers all do catch up, it's easy enough to just go and remove these few lines from your from your gulp file. So that's it. Thanks for your attention.